Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add advanced Steam sessions to Survival Game Kit V2. In this video I'm going to be using Unreal Engine 5.1, but you can follow along with this video in Unreal Engine 5, and even the older Unreal Engine 4 versions. There is a slight difference for Unreal Engine 4, but I'll tell you when we get to that difference. Another thing that you're going to need to have installed is the Microsoft.NET 6.0, so that's this here. I'll have this linked in the description, but you will need to have this installed. Another thing you'll need is Visual Studio uh, for Unreal Engine 5.1, that's Visual Studio 2022. And you will need to have it installed correctly. There's uh, specific options for Unreal Engine that need to be ticked on. I'll have a video linked in the description that you can follow along with if you haven't done that already. So to get started, we just need to download Advanced Team Sessions. I'll have a link to that in the description, but that's gonna be this page here. So you just click on your engine version. For me, that's this one here. We'll open that up and then click the download button at the top here and hit download anyway, and then that will start to download. Once that's finished downloading, we'll go to that file location. So I'm just gonna open that up here. I'm gonna right click and then do extract all, and I'm just gonna drag it over here and hit extract, and then let it finish its uh, process. Once that's done, it's opened up the folder for us, and we're gonna copy the advanced sessions folder. So just do copy, and we can close these out. We'll minimize this for a second. And in our project, I'm gonna right click the main folder and go to, or click show in editor. And then in here, we'll go to the main folder and we're gonna create a new folder. And this is gonna be called plugins. Open that up and we'll paste in our advanced sessions here. Once that's done, we're gonna go back to the main folder in our project, then config, and we're gonna open up the default engine file here. And I'll just bring that over from my other screen. Next, we're going to copy some stuff from the Epic documentation. I'll have that linked in the description as well. But that's going to be this page here. And if you click on the side here to end result, you'll see we've got some uh, text here that we need to copy. So I'm going to highlight from the bottom and just highlight everything and do Control C. Then we'll minimize this. And in here, we're going to start by highlighting this text here, delete that, and then paste in the new stuff we just copied. Now we do need to edit this a little bit. So this here, we just need to delete that. And then this little bit here, the uh, colon and the space, we'll delete that. And then just hit delete to move it up underneath the online subsection uh, Steam here. Now in Unreal Engine 4, you don't need this bit of text here, but for Unreal Engine 5, 5.1, and future Unreal Engine 5 versions, you will need this bit of text here. So make sure you do have that. Now the Steam app ID that we've got here is currently set to 480. That's like a testing ID for Steam, so we can use it to just test our game. But if you've got your um, game set up on Steam already, you should be able to find your game's Steam ID, and you'll want to put that in here. But we're just going to be using the testing ID, so everything here is now fine. So we're just going to click Save to make sure that saves our changes. We can close this out. We can actually close this folder as well now. Next, we need to just restart our project so all of those changes uh, take effect. So I'm just gonna do that now. Now, once you're back in your project, we're just gonna go to the edit, then plugins. And up here, you should see advanced Steam sessions plugin. If it's not here, you can search for it as well, but I'm just gonna click this. You wanna make sure that these are ticked on. If they're not for you, just tick them on and then there'll be a restart button here to just to reopen the project. Now we're just going to make a few small changes to Survival Game Kit so that it actually uses advanced Steam sessions. So we're just going to close this out. But first we can actually test out that Steam is working. Before we do this, you'll need to have Steam running on your computer and it needs to be logged in. And then uh, we need to play in standalone game mode. But first I'm just going to change this to one player and then select standalone. And then I'm going to hit standalone game. And this can take a while to open up, so just give it time. It will eventually spawn the character in. So once the game loads up, mine did take a while, so yours might be the same as well. Just give it time, it will pop up eventually. Uh, I didn't get it on recording, but this Steam Overlay uh, popped up as well. But if we do the Steam Overlay shortcut keys, you can see that my uh, Steam Overlay is working, so we know that Steam is active. So now we can just quit out of this, and we're going to go to the host. So we'll search for host in the content browser. We'll start with the host load uh, game server widget here. Open that up. I'll just bring that over from my other screen. Then we'll go to the graph view. And in here, we're just gonna place this node with the advanced sessions version. So we'll search for create session. And we want create advanced session. And I'm just gonna connect this up to our button here. 
we'll delete this and we'll just move this up here. We want on success to run this code here. Then I'm just gonna move these so we've got a bit more space. This needs to go into player controller. This goes into public connections and this goes into LAN. There are other settings here. Um, that's to do with advanced team sessions. If you wanna know more about these settings, you can uh, head over to its forum post and they've got information about that there. But we are gonna add an extra setting. So we'll just drag out from here, do a make array. Then we'll drag out from here and do another make. And we want this bottom one here, the uh, property string option. And we're gonna set the key to name. And we're gonna set the value to just SGKV2. And basically this just allows us to uh, filter out servers that don't have this when we search for servers, just to um, help make sure you're not seeing other people that are using the test ID. If you're using your own Steam ID, then you probably don't need this. But for now, we're just gonna compile and save this. And we can actually uh, copy these nodes because we're gonna need to put them in another widget. So we'll go back to the content browser and you can see we've got a second host widget here the host new game server, we'll just open that up, go to graph, and we'll go to uh, the begin play, click event graph. And in here we have another create session. So we're just gonna paste that node in here, uh, connect this up, and we want on success connected to here, and we'll move these down, and we want this plugged into our player controller, this into public connections, and this into use LAN. And then we can compile and save this. Next, we're gonna to go to our server browser so we can have it find our servers. So we'll go to the content browser, search for server, uh, and we want the server browser here. Open that up, go to the graph view, and then we'll go to the event graph and to buttons. And in here, we've got a find session node. We're gonna be replacing this with a, a um, advanced session version. So we'll just search for find sessions. We want the find sessions advanced. And I'm gonna connect this up to here. We'll connect the top output to this uh, pin here. I'll delete this old find session node. Then success plugs into this variable here, failure into here. And I'll just move these down and we'll move this up. So for player controller, we'll just plug that into get owning player. Then for LAN, I'm gonna plug this into LAN. Max results, uh, you can set this to what you want, but if you're using the test ID that I mentioned earlier, you'll want this value to be reasonably high. So I'm just gonna set it to say uh, 99 for now. Then we're gonna add the filter that we added when we um, set up our create node. So we're gonna do make. Then we're gonna drag out from here and we're gonna do another make. And we're gonna select the option here. Oh, and we'll just move this along so we've got more space. We're gonna keep this as equals, then drag out from session search property. And again, just do make. And then we want this bottom one here, property string. And then here, we're gonna set the key to name, exactly like we did before. And then the value SGKV2, like that. Now, again, this node has some additional options that you can play about with if you want to. You can find out more information from the Advanced Team Sessions forum for these. And lastly, we do need to plug in our results. Don't miss this, otherwise you won't find any servers. Then we can compile this and save it. So once you've got all of that connected up, we're gonna go back to the content browser and we're gonna make one more change and that's to the game mode. So we'll search for game mode and we wanna find the SGK game mode here. Open that up. Then go to functions and open up the spawn default pawn at transform function. And in here you can see we set our player's name here. And what we're gonna do is get our Steam's uh, ID and use that as our player's name. So we'll drag out from here and we're gonna do get unique, oh, get unique net ID. And then from that we're gonna drag out and we want uh, unique net ID to string. And then from that we'll plug that into name. It'll create a convert node for us. So once you're done, it should look like this. And what this is doing is it just gets your player's uh, Steam ID and uses that as the player name instead of just this um, placeholder code. But one thing I will mention is if you're just testing, playing an editor, building your game, um, the Steam won't return any ID here. So this will just be empty. So if you're doing that, when you're just using the engine and building things, I actually recommend just keeping this code plugged in here because that will just make sure that all of the players have their own names. Um, and then when you go to package your game, when you want to test Steam, you can just come back in here and plug this in like that. So that's pretty much all of the changes that we actually need to make to SGK to use advanced Steam sessions. So we'll just compile and save this. Now I'll show you how uh, you package the game. Now, if you don't already have any C++ in your project, which Survival Game Kit V2 doesn't, 
you do need to add a C++ class to it um, for advanced theme sessions to compile properly when you actually package the game. So for that, you go up to the tools option here. You wanna select new C++ class. It, none is fine, we can just select none. Then my class is fine. You just have it set all default and hit create class. This might take a, set, a second to uh, load, just let it do its thing. Once it's done, you'll get this message pop up. That's fine, just hit okay. And then you'll have this as well. Um, just click okay, or yes, sorry. And it should open up Visual Studio. And it has for me, it's just done it on the other screen. I will uh, drag it over once it loads. So you can see it's opened up Visual Studio. Again, this is why you need Visual Studio installed. But you can see we've got our class that we've just created and this is all fine. So now we can close this. And I do recommend just saving all in your project and then restarting it again now. Now, when you go to reopen your project, you'll probably get a message like this. That's fine, just hit yes. And it will take a little while for your project to reopen, but it is doing stuff in the background. So just let it do its thing and uh, it will open up in a, in a moment. And after a little while, your project should open up like mine did. Mine took about a minute uh, just to recompile the C++ stuff, but now we're back in our project and we're actually ready to package our game now. So we can just go up to the platforms here, go to Windows, and then you can hit package project and select your package location. So I'll just do it to the desktop and hit uh, accept. And then you can see the output log. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer because we've got to compile the plugins as well now, but just let it do it and uh, I'll come back once mine's finished packaging. So now mine's all done, you can see it took about a minute and a half. Yours might take longer if you haven't packaged your game in a while or haven't packaged at all before. It can take much longer, so just keep that in mind. But now I can open up my game, so I'll open up the files here. You can see we've got our packaged files, I'll open up the game, and it's gonna open on the wrong screen, but I'll drag it over. So I'll just move it over here. You can see our Steam overlays actually popped up, so we know Steam's active and working, and my overlay is working as well. So that's pretty much all the steps for getting advanced Steam sessions working with Survival Game Kit. There are a few uh, things when you go to test um, with other players connecting to you. Um, first thing, you'll need two separate PCs. Both of them need to be running Steam and logged into their accounts, and they need to be different accounts, which is important. And one other thing is that if you're using the 480 test ID that I mentioned earlier, that's the Steam testing ID, um, any of the players connecting to each other, they all have to be in the same region. So uh, someone in Australia couldn't connect to someone in Europe. If you have your own um, game ID for Steam, you won't have that problem. That'll be fine. You'll be able to connect anywhere in the world. But if you are using that test ID, you do need to be in the same region. A couple of other smaller things to mention is, obviously, when you go to host a game, uh, you click new game, make sure that use LAN is ticked off if you want other people to be able to connect you over the internet. And then again, in the server browser, if you want to be able to find servers that are on the internet, you need to make sure that use LAN is ticked off. So that's it for this video. Um, again, all of the links will be in the description of this video if you need to find anything. Um, I do recommend just reading through Epic's documentation on this. Um, there's useful information there. There's features that you may want to enable, like uh, being able to join friends through the friend list. By default, that's not enabled with Unreal. Uh, you have to make some uh, modifications for that, but none of it involves modifying survival game kit. It's all sort of config stuff. Um, so if you want that those features, I do recommend just checking out that documentation. So thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below.